I'd like to thank everyone for coming today. It's uh, nice to see so many folks from our cadets, our Legionnaires, and members of the larger community here today. It's a, a real pleasure to join with you. Um, as we begin today's service, I want to acknowledge that we hold this service of remembrance and commemoration on Indigenous land. Following the gold rush of 1949 and California becoming a state in 1950 or 1850, sorry, the United States government began the stated process to establish formal relations with their tribal communities. The unstated intent of this process was to extinguish indigenous title to the land and forcibly move people to areas that were not desired by the whites. Throughout 1851 and 1852, three commissioners negotiated with tribes up and down the state, creating the alphabet treaties, treaties A through treaty R. Greenlawn Memorial Park, where we are today, and Colma in general, sits on the unceded land that was once home to the Alonai tribes of the Miwok Ma and Ramesh Tush. It also included, it was, sorry, it was included in session tract 274 of Treaty M in 1851, which was designed to limit the indigenous territory to a small parcel of land between Merced and the Tolum River. The United States, particularly the US Senate, would fail to ratify these treaties because if Mexico had not originally recognized the indigenous titles in the first place, then there was no need for the US to even enter into these treaties to take the land. As such, the land we stand on today is unceded territory. It is important to understand that the existence of these treaties and their contents were held in secret until 1905 which meant that for over 50 years, indigenous tribes in California had no right to exist. Additionally, the US government, were while, the nation, while the US government were negotiating these treaties, the newly formed state of California were passing laws to authorize and pay for the extermination of indigenous people or to provide for their enslavement. Today, as we remember those who bravely answered their country's call to service, we should also remember and acknowledge the people indigenous to this land, their culture, their language, and their freedom, all of which were stolen from them. I'll turn this over now to our chaplain, Dennis Edmondson, for the invocation, followed by the posting of the colors by our U.S. Naval Sea Cadet Corps, Arkansas Division. I ask you to bow your head, please. Almighty God, as you gather your people together in this, this hollow remembrance, we give you thanks for all who laid down their lives for our sake, for whom you have gathered from the storms of war into peace of your presence. Let the memory of their devotion ever be an example to us, that we, the last, being faithful unto death, they receive with them the crown of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Is it? Huh? Yes, sir. Since we don't have seating here, I don't have to ask people to rise. Those who may be watching the screen, please rise for the U.S. National Anthem. Yes. Oh.
Apologize for the volume on that. This is only our second hybrid service that we've had. Uh, the last one was up at Liberty Cemetery, which is a much smaller area. So I guess we're going to have to invest in a better speaker for the uh, live audience. Um, at this time, I'd like to call upon Stephen Krieger, our membership chair, to read on Memorial Day. This will be followed by Cadet Mendoza from the Cadets. We will be reading A Death of a Soldier. In memorial, the flags are proud to decorate the graves of heroes, catching every breeze that blows. They shout significantly, truth that saves a world almost accustomed to its woes. They speak of boys with blood red as the rose, who sacrificed young lives and happy dreams. To learn a mystery nobody knows, to fly beyond familiar hills and streams. The Death of a Soldier by Wallace Stevens. Life contracts and death is expected. As in the season of autumn, the soldier falls. He does not become a three days personage, imposing his separation, calling for pomp. Death is absolute and without memorial, as in the season of autumn, when the wind stops. When the wind stops and over the heavens, the clouds go nevertheless in their direction. Next, I'd like to call upon our treasurer, Margaret Krieger, to do the roll call of remembrance, followed by our chaplain again, Dennis Edmonds, to do the act of remembrance, which will be followed by our piper, provide Charlie Martin, providing his rendition of the battle over. As we remember together, let us pause to think reverently of those of our comrades who by sea, by air, and on land laid down their lives for their sovereign and country. Their sacrifice will ever inspire us to labor on to the end that those who survive and need our aid may be assistance, and that the country in which we live and for which they died may never be worthy of the sacrifice we made. During the silence, we will remember our fallen comrades and those who have passed on since we gathered together. And the Bond Field, Hugh Campion, Jack Kincaid, Fred Rutledge. Let us now observe a moment of silence. They shall not grow old, as we for our left grow old. He shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, 
We will remember them. We will remember them. I'd like to call upon our U.S. Naval Sea Cadet Corps once again to place the wreaths of remembrance. As we gather here today, I'm reminded that the National War Memorial in Ottawa was first proposed in 1923 and eventually completed in 1925. It was originally designated to commemorate Canada's sacrifice during the First World War, but now it honors all those who have served during wartime. <laughs> Not prepared for the wind today either, it seems. <laughs> there have actually been more than 118,000 Canadians who have died fighting for their country in overseas wars. About 28,000 of those warriors were lost in unknown graves. It wasn't until 22 years ago yesterday that the tomb of the unknown soldier was added at the foot of the war memorial. Speaking to the crowd at the time, then Governor General Adrian Clarkson said, today we are gathered together as one to bury someone's son. We do not know whose son he was. We do not know where he came from. One of the things that we do know is that the unknown soldier was originally laid to rest at Cabaret Rouge Cemetery in France, where more than 7,000 British Empire troops are buried many of them Canadians who fought and died during the Battle of Vimy Ridge. Perhaps the unknown soldier is Private John Henry Goodway of Toronto, age 20, who was killed on April 9, 1917, during the attack. Maybe he is Private Robert Owen of Manitoba, age 29, who also died that Easter Monday at Vimy. Neither man has a known grave. It is for these reasons and those 118,000 Canadians that we wear a poppy as a symbol of hope that sprouted on the Belgian battlefield during that conflict. Memorial Day is not about picnics and parades, though there is nothing wrong with enjoying and celebrating our way of life. 
Memorial Day is about gratitude and remembrance. It is about honoring the men and women who made it possible for us to gather here today in peace. Next, we will have the Canadian and the British national anthems, at which point, or at the conclusion of which, the colors will be retired. O oh God, we remember before you those who laid down their lives for freedom and truth. We commend their souls into your gracious keeping and pray that they may be worthy of their sacrifice. Help us to be faithful and true to those ideals for which they fought and died. May we continue to perpetuate the memory of our departed comrades by our service to country, community, and comrades. And remembering our solemn obligation, may we ever pray. Lord God of hosts, be with us yet, lest we forget, lest, lest we, we forget. forget. Before I have Charlie play us out with uh, Amazing Grace, again, I want to thank everyone for coming. For those of you that are uh, new to this place, um, this is one of two areas that we maintain with the Rome Canadian Legion. Uh, so this area that you see in front of you, uh, basically right around the headstones are sort of bordering it as a burial place for Canadian and British servicemen and women. Uh, you can see their plaques along the ground here as well. Our departed comrades who aren't buried here, members of the Legion over the years, uh, have their names on a plaque on the monument there in the middle. I encourage you to take a, a walk around and look at some of the names and the service that they've had to their country before you leave today. And with that, I will turn it once again over to our Piper. Uh -huh.